great to see everybody this morning, and uh, thanks for, for joining us. Uh, let me start by uh, you know, just expressing our gratitude to uh, Coach Freeze for all that he did for Liberty Football and the university over the past four years. He and his staff uh, moved this program uh, so far forward. It, it's really hard to measure, and uh, the contributions they made both on the field and off the field, uh, the spiritual influence that they, they had have been uh, – have been unparalleled. So we're really grateful to uh, Hugh, and we wish him and Jill and their daughters uh, the very best as they uh, embark on a new journey. Uh, with that, we have uh, already launched the search for our next head coach, and uh, we're looking forward to moving uh, through that process uh, very rapidly. Uh, my hope is that we'll be able to complete that, that very quickly and have uh, a new head coach in place uh, by next week. All right, with that, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, we'll start with Damian Sorlet from the Lindsberg News in advance. Ian, with uh, trying to get the search done quickly, how important is like the transfer portal opening on December 5th and then uh, the early signing period, which is December 21st, and making sure you have someone in place to navigate all that craziness within a you know two to three week span? Yeah, Damien, the, uh, the December 5th transfer portal date is, I think, driving all of the searches that are going on around the country right now because you certainly want to have a coach in place when the, the portal opens next Monday so that the student athletes know who their coach is going to be mo moving forward because uh, uncertainty creates confusion and uh, you certainly would, wouldn't want to see a student athlete you know, make a bad decision that ultimately ends up being detrimental to them down the road. So uh, we're going to do everything we can to have a, a head coach in place by uh, – by, by a week from now. Let's go next to Jermaine Farrell, FXR in Roanoke. Ian, first of all, thanks for your time this morning, sir. It's sort of a two-part question. Number one, what exactly are you looking for in your new head coach? And, you know, I know a lot of times athletes are going to kind of, if, if their coach is being looked at, and I know a lot of people say, you know, it's an honor to have your coach look at for big jobs like this, but is that, is that something you, you kind of look at, you know, if my coach is, you know, being looked at, do I have by the short list, do I start making contact a little bit early in the event that you're in this position? So it's sort of those two parts. Yeah, I'll start with the, the second part, Jermaine. Um, you know, certainly when you have a, a coach as outstanding as Hugh Freeze, you, you always want to have a short list ready because, uh, you know, he is, he's one of the best uh, coaches in college football. So, you know, you, you have to anticipate that at some point he could have an opportunity like this. So uh, we're well prepared for that. And uh, in terms of the, the criteria, you know, at Liberty it starts off with we have to have someone who's a, a strong mission fit, somebody who wants to train champions for Christ and fits our university well. We're also looking for someone who's a strong uh, leader, CEO, culture builder of our program. We need someone who uh, tactically is very skilled and uh, a strong recruiter. So those are the, the main criteria for our, uh, our search. Ian, I'll ask one real quick. Can you confirm who the interim head coach is right now? Yeah, last night we had a, a team meeting at 6 o'clock when uh, Coach Free said goodbye to the team. And uh, I had a chance to address the team and introduce our uh, interim head coach, and that is Josh Aldrich, who, who serves as our co-defensive coordinator. Uh, really impressed with Josh and think he's going to serve us extremely well during this interim period and uh, through the bowl game. Thanks. Let's, uh, let's go next to Mia Nelson from WSET. Thank you. So my question really, I, I wanted to know, you started the process for look, looking for a new head coach. Could you explain what that process looks like? Yeah, um, really a lot of the work's done on the front end. And obviously we, you know, this did not catch us off guard, um, you know, on Saturday or, or the last few days. We we knew that there's some possibility that the Coach Freeze could be going to Auburn for, for the past few weeks. So we've put together a, a list of prospective candidates. Uh, we've hired a search firm uh, to work with us. And we've been uh, screening candidates and uh, had conversations with uh, a number of individuals already. So again, we're moving very quickly. and. Uh, and hope to have uh, have the search wrapped up um, next week. Let's go next to Ed Lane from CBS Sports Radio, Lunchburg. Ian, thank you for your time this morning. Was there a point where you realized retaining you was not going to be an option, or was that something that was relatively clear early on, just given his affinity for 
Auburn for the SEC and uh, obviously the pull that ultimately brought him to those chances. Yeah, we, we've known the last few weeks that, that Coach Freeze and Auburn have been in discussions, and uh, it was unfortunate. It was kind of a, a clunky process with some of the, the news uh, being released Saturday morning before our game and uh, uh, playing out over the last several days. But uh, uh, ultimately, um, again, we're, uh, uh, we've been able to, to get started with our, our, uh, our search process, and we're, we're well underway right now. John Manson from the Sea of Red. Morning, Ian. Uh, obviously, you're, you're looking for a head coach, but the football team has a bowl game they're preparing for here in a few weeks. Um, is there anything you can share about, uh, you know, the prospects for that bowl game and things like that? And uh, also, what, what would be your uh, expectation of how this will go the next few weeks as far as, you know, uh, Josh Aldridge is an interim. Do you expect him to, you know, be kind of the head coach regardless of what happens in the coaching side of things? Uh, for that bowl game as far as preparation and planning and execution. Yeah, our, uh, our team's very excited about the bowl game. Um, we expect it's going to be um, uh, pre-Christmas, and uh, we've been – uh, we believe it'll be somewhere in the in the southeast region, so they'll be very close for uh, some of our uh, our players and their and their families to be able to uh, to attend. I think it's narrowed down to a few few options right now. So uh, we're excited about that. As you know, we're three and zero in bowl games, and we want to go four and zero. And uh, we don't have a championship to play for like many schools do. So our bowl game is our championship. So this is something that our our coaches, and our, our staff, and our student athletes are excited about and looking forward to. And uh, I've got tremendous confidence in, in Coach Aldridge and the staff that they will uh, have the team well prepared uh, uh, for the bowl game. Is there anyone within the current staff, Ian, that has expressed interest in the in this position or that you'll consider? Yeah, we're, we're considering both uh, internal and external candidates uh, at this time. And uh, again, we'll ultimately, we've had a tremendous expression of interest in this job. And again, that's a credit to Coach Freeze and the staff and our players. This, this job is so much different than it was four years ago. Um, we're getting uh, tremendous interest from around the country from very qualified coaches. And again, what's really the, the, the key differentiator for us is we have to have someone who really fits Liberty. Danny, go ahead. Ian, you know, I went back and read the transcript from the 2018 press conference, and you said head coaching experience was uh, preferable for you. But in this climate where you had some up-and-comers as assistant coaches who are very well qualified to be head coaches. Are you going to consider both current and former head coaches and you know current up and rising assistant coaches? Yeah, again, we've had strong interest from both uh, assistant coaches and head coaches from around the country, and and uh, we will consider um, all candidates. John, did you have another one? Yeah, Ian, uh, how important is it in the day and age of, uh, you know, the, the portal, you know, here opening up next week and, and uh, also recruiting, how important is it to, to get a guy in place quickly, especially for roster retention? Yeah, very important. And, uh, again, the, the portal is what's driving it more so even than, than recruiting. The early signing period is until uh, December 21st. So um, we have time to uh, have one or two um, recruiting weekends after the portal opens, but uh, the portal is, is really the driver because uh, we certainly want to, um, again, do everything we can to have a coach in place so our student athletes can meet them uh, in the event they, they were considering uh, pursuing the portal. And kind of as a follow up to that, uh, have you had a chance to speak to any of the players and, you know, maybe in a group setting or something like that, or to, to the leaders or, or anything as far as, you know, your message to them moving forward and in regards to the portal? I did. I, I had a chance to speak to the entire team last night, and uh, when we introduced uh, uh, after Coach Freeze said goodbye, goodbye, and we introduced Coach Aldridge, and I uh, uh, had just had a chance to talk to him about everything from the bowl game to the transfer portal to uh, uh, just how to how to move ahead. Any time you uh, you face change, it's very difficult, and I told him that this is the time when leaders lead, and we've got a really strong group of uh, leaders. Uh, the culture council. I met with them privately afterwards, and. Uh, I think we've got a really good group of uh, you know veteran leaders that uh, that love liberty, 
that um, you know represent the culture of our program extremely well, and will be able to really help uh, encourage uh, some of the younger players that that you know are, are taken aback by by Coach Freeze's departure. Previously, Ian, when this uh, came about, and Coach Gill retired, I think on a Monday, and I want to say we were introducing Coach Freeze by Friday, if our memory serves me correctly. Do you foresee this playing out that quickly, or maybe even quicker? Well, it's going to need to proceed uh, close to that quickly, um, but uh, you know we're going to be diligent. We need to uh, to uh, you know be thorough in our in our vetting process, and we need to also um, be respectful of uh, you know some of the programs that are playing this weekend as well. So there's a lot a uh, lot of factors at play right now, but uh, ultimately, again, if if we can have a head coach in place by uh, by December 5th, that would be uh, a great outcome for Liberty. Let's go to Mia, and then we'll go back to Damian. So how would you say the team is handling this big change? How is it impacting them? Yeah, you know, obviously um, it, it did not uh, serve them well on, on Saturday when some of the news reports uh, came out. Uh, uh, the, the leak that came out of Auburn, you know, just before the game on Saturday, I think was very disruptive to our team. And you saw that in terms of the performance uh, on the field. And uh, I kind of chalked that up to uh, Auburn just being Auburn. And uh, as far as... Um, um, how they're doing right now. I think, you know, it varies by player, but I think we have a, a lot of maturity in that locker room, and I think that the veteran players are handling it extremely well, and I think that message will be carried on to some of the younger players who, uh, uh, you know, aren't as experienced and haven't, uh, you know, dealt with something uh, like this. But, you know, I had a chance also to, to speak to some of the, the players who were here um, uh, four years ago when Coach Gill surprised all of us with, with his retirement, and as you mentioned, uh, Nick, and and uh, again, four days later, we had uh, Coach Freeze as the new head coach. So um, anyway, the, uh, I think there's a lot of confidence that uh, this process is going to uh, work out well, and uh, we're going to have an outstanding head coach uh, leading us forward. Ian, I wanted to bring up a point about like NIL in this era. Uh, this is the first time you're doing a coaching search for football with NIL as a, as a backdrop. Is that a big factor in how a coach handles that? Uh, within the program and, and through recruiting as well. Yeah, no, NIL is definitely something that that is is a factor in uh, in college football, college sports in general right now. So, you know, the fact that we have our uh, uh, NIL marketplace with uh, influencer Flames Exchange, and the fact that we have a, a group licensing opportunity with Brander, and uh, that we're also uh, um, working with the Sea of Red on a collective are all things that I think will serve our program well and uh, also uh, be beneficial to, uh, uh, to, to the new head coach. Let's go uh, to Jermaine, and then we'll go to Ed after that. Uh, Ian, uh, roughly how many candidates do you have at this moment? Or do you, can you let us know how many you have that have shown interest, whether internal or external? I probably need to uh, check my email for an up-to-date uh, uh, number, but uh, it's pretty substantial. We're getting, uh, again, tremendous interest. Um, we've had interest from Power 5 head coaches, Group of 5 head coaches, assistants at the Power 5 level, assistants at the Group of 5 level. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a wide range of, uh, of individuals that expressed interest. And um, we're, again, trying to vet that group as quickly as possible. and. Uh, really hone in on uh, on our top candidates. And I can ask one more real quick. I know that uh, when you look at hiring, are you putting any stipulations in place? Like, do they have to keep anyone off this on the staff? Or is there, I mean, I don't know if you can talk dollars about the contracts and all of that, but are there any certain stipulations that you have to let the coach know that this is, in order to get the job, these are the things you have to have? Yeah, we you know we put together uh, parameters uh, for the job in terms of uh, you know staff salaries and budgets and and uh, resources that we have to offer and it's one of the blessings here. This is one of the best, if not the best, group of five resource programs in the country. So people know this is an outstanding job, facilities, uh, salaries, budgets, and uh, that's why it's attracted such uh, such strong interest. So so that's uh, that's been really helpful for us. Thank you. Ian. Ian, from the Turner Gill retirement a few years ago to each offseason, it seems like there's been interest in Hugh Freeze, and now obviously he's acted on that. 
how does that shape your database of candidates and frankly whether it's coaches assistant coaches or their representation reaching out to you and giving you an idea that hey if this day comes that Hugh Freeze leaves we're interested in taking this job yeah you know um I, I and you know more than annually you're always updating your your short list you're identifying prospective candidates and you're hearing from individuals who who might be uh uh, a fed, someone you might want to consider in the future for a, for a coaching search. But um, again, what's really unique about right now is that this current week, there's so many jobs open, and uh, uh, there's uh, it's a very fluid, dynamic environment in the uh, in the uh, coaching search space right now. So uh, we're trying to navigate through that well. But uh, again, I'm confident we're going to have a really good outcome here. Ian, another from me, um, you mentioned the, the leak from Auburn that came out and the reports from Saturday. Prior to that point, were you satisfied with how this process was going? You said that you knew that, that Coach Freeze had been in communication with Auburn. Were you satisfied with the communication with you and how things were going until Saturday? Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, um, you know, Auburn uh, um, – had been uh, very professional as had Coach Freeze in terms of uh, dealing with everything. I think the leak caught everybody off guard, and you know that was very disappointing to Coach Freeze. It was disappointing to our staff and our players, myself, and uh, they're they're just uh, that was uh, very unfortunate. Any others for yeah, Paul? Sure, I've got another one. Ian. In terms of even when you transition from Turner to Hugh Freeze. How is what you're looking for in a coach different now, given the changes to both NIL and the transfer portal? Yes, yeah, you know the the, uh, the college landscape uh, has changed dramatically in the last couple of years, and uh, you mentioned two of the big areas: uh, NIL and transfer portal. Uh, so obviously, having uh, you know uh, some experience and. Uh, uh, aptitude in, in dealing with those issues is, is something that would be uh, would be beneficial and important quality in in the, the next head coach. Is age or experience a factor for you? Um, experience is always a factor, and uh, you know I think people who have a track record um, and a track record of success is always something that you uh, you value in a in a search. Any other? I can ask another question real quick, sorry. Uh, so I know you said you uh, hired, uh, the school's hired a, uh, a search firm, but at the end of the day, is it your call only, or are there other people involved with that, or is it just going to be your call on who will get the position? Yeah, I, I have uh, some of our administrators uh, are assisting me with uh, with the search, so it's, uh, it's a group effort here in the athletic department. And then ultimately, uh, I'll make a recommendation to uh, President Prevo, uh, who will take that to uh, to the board. Okay. 